Hello, welcome to our 10 minute touch point for today. We are on day three of our 14 day challenge. The challenge before us is can I experience a fuller life while here at home than I had before? this season was upon us. And we're just going to do that together. And honestly, you guys, I just love coming. I look forward to this moment in the day just because it feels like a chance to be connected, that we're we're kind of all in a circle together. And I hope you guys are seeing the comments and the people checking in right now just because it makes you know, okay, you're not alone. We're all doing this together. We're staying connected in the way that we can with this incredible opportunity we have to use technology. So I just want to start off and say, does anybody have any good news today? Anybody want to share any good news? Anybody get dressed today? Anybody get dressed today? Anybody do a chore today that they didn't want to do? Anybody work out when they didn't want to work out? If you've got a bigger piece of good news than that, that's great too. But honestly, I think all those other things are also good news. So what have you done today for your habits are that are helping you facilitate a full life? Did you put your clothes on? Did you get dressed? Did you work out or move your body at all, even a walk or anything like that? Have you have you fed yourself? Have you brushed your teeth? Have you thought about next week or anything ahead? Any of those things to me qualify as good, good news. Ingrid handed out meals for Richmond City kids. I think that counts as great news. Ingrid, can you tell us a little bit more about how the vibe of that was? Because I've been thinking so much about that. Uh, Melissa wants us to know her daughter made homemade hand sanitizer today. Thank you. Please tell your daughter to set up a shop and start sending that stuff out. Uh, Sandy put on her own the struggle t-shirt. It's a good time to own the struggle. Definitely great. I've got Positively Pixie who says she's blessed to work from home. I talked to another friend of mine who works from home who was like, hey, this isn't any different for me. I've already figured out how to do this, which is true. Those of us who have children at home are figuring out how to do this all the time. Um, Melissa says that she, nope, Leslie said she took a kickboxing class. Leslie, I'm assuming you did that online. If you want to drop the link for us, I will include that in my my next email. I want to make sure that you guys actually have some good connections and some good things to look forward to. And you're sending me the things that you're enjoying and I'm cataloging those and putting those together for you. I've got lots of like dance YouTube playlists and dance uh, studios. That's good news for me is I love all of these artists who are just releasing their work for free and giving us something to look forward to. And maybe if you remember um, in February, I was talking a lot about how we all need hobbies was it prophetic? <laughs> do we all need some hobbies? <laughs> we do need some hobbies right now. So I'm so glad. Ingrid says uh, that feeding the kids was great. And everyone, everything, everyone was so great, grateful for it. It puts things in perspective. I love that, Ingrid. If you are in Richmond, let me know. I can include that link if that's something that you would be interested in doing. Jennifer is looking for some good yoga to do with elementary school kids. If you've got a link for that, please let us know so that um, we can share that with one another. I think it's going to be like this for a little bit longer. So I think we're going to need to keep on sharing those tools. And when you send them to me, I can then send them out to our whole family. So amazing stuff, you guys. So, so glad you're here. Now that we're all kind of here, I do have just a word that I want to share with you today. And actually wasn't the word that I had planned, but I woke up this morning and I was not in a good mood at all. I just, I'm an Enneagram 3. I've shared that with you guys before. And um, it means that I feel my feelings on like time lapse. So I don't really feel the feelings when I'm having them. I feel them in reverse like later. And what I'm trying to do is just close the gap between when I'm actually experiencing something and when I'm feeling it. And it takes real work to do that. It takes intentional work for me to do that. And so I've been thinking about how important it is that we feel our feelings. I was thinking about the, is it in big when Tom Hanks is like, feelings, nothing more than feelings, because we need to feel our feelings right now. Remember what I talked about yesterday, that operating system is working at a very high capacity. So we, we actually might be experiencing more of recognizing that we do make decisions and think through our feelings. As It's as if we have a filter that is in the front of our mind. And so first thing we do is feel what we're experiencing and then we make decisions. So imagine if you're not in touch with what you're feeling and then you're making decisions, then you're going to be making decisions that aren't necessarily the best ones for you. So we want to be able to get in touch and harness what those feelings are. And so many of us shut down feelings because there's been lots of 
of studies on emotion to kind of break down what are the basic emotions of, of the human psyche. Some people say three, some people say five, seven, 10, up to 27 basic emotions. In my books, I've written about the idea that three basic emotions is where we can start from bad, sad, mad. Um, on the on the sort of negative side, and then there's happiness. And even if you look to kind of saying that the basic emotions are six or eight emotions, six of those eight emotions are going to be negative emotions: disgust, anger, um, fear, sadness, grief. Like there's so many more emotions on the negative side than there is on the positive side. Yet we we have such a hard time feeling our feelings, and feelings aren't the best way to make decisions. But it's also not great to make decisions decisions without your feelings, because guess what? You're feeling them. Whether you know that you're feeling them or not, you are feeling them. So this morning when I woke up and I just was in a bad mood that was kind of coloring the rest of the day, it's it sort of is like when they talk about feelings like a wet blanket or like sort of like a heavy cloud or a fog. And that fog was making me lose hope in what the day was going to bring and kind of giving me just a sort of worst case scenario feeling about the life we're in and what's happening right now. And it was literally dampening every thought that I was having. And so what I want to encourage you to do is the same thing that I've learned to do for myself, which is that I stop and say, what am I feeling? And if you have a very hard time, most of us do, pinpointing emotions, I'm going to send out in today's, it'll come to you tomorrow um, for today's video, I'm going to send you this feeling wheel that kind of helps you find yourself on the wheel. It starts with the very basic emotions, and then it goes out from there. Um, And it just helps you like pinpoint, like, what is it that I'm feeling right now? But what you might be feeling right now might be related to something from yesterday or the day before that you just are needing to allow yourself the space to process. Emotions to me are like squirrels. They're running around in your soul. They're all around the place. And if you try to just like harness your emotions, who harnesses a squirrel? You can't harness, you can't harness a squirrel. You can observe a squirrel. And you can be like, what's the squirrel up to? What's the squirrel doing? Let me make sure I know what that feeling is before I can actually harness those feelings, harness the emotion, kind of get them in line, talk to myself into a better place. I've got to know what I'm feeling in the first place. Does that make sense? So yesterday, I was with a family that I love dearly, have known for a long time, and we had to do a memorial service just in their home with just their family members because of course we had to cancel every other part of it. Well, I'm thinking I'm leading and I'm the one who needs to make it happen and I'm there and I'm present as with this family. And then this morning when I woke up sad, it was like, oh, I'm processing the loss for these people that I love dearly. I just was processing it a little bit later. I'm processing it on time lapse. And by allowing myself to feel it, by naming the feelings, which are sometimes in sad and mad and bad, and there might be kind of a connection in all of those, by naming those feelings, I'm able to just release them. And when we release them, then we've got the clear space to say, okay, what is it that I want to train my mind toward today? If you don't feel and release, feel and process, feel and decide with those feelings, they will come out sideways. They'll come out a different way. And you may feel lethargic. You may feel stressed. You may snap at your child later and you're like, I didn't need to snap at my child about this thing. But it's because that processing system is so stressed and there's emotions in there that you haven't allowed yourself to feel to let go, feel and release, feel and process, feel and make a decision about. Because you haven't done that, they're going to continue to come out sideways. There is not one of us who is not based in our feelings. It's just a matter of how much uh, intensity there is there, how much we're aware of it. So even the most stoic person that you know that you're thinking of right now, even that person still is processing through their emotions first and then out through your their logic. They may have learned to stuff those emotions away, but we want to learn how to work in harmony with our emotion and our thought because that's going to, to give us the best full free life that we can experience. And in this time of stress, honestly, this is a great time to be more mindful of your emotions because they're coming to the surface more easily. And so since they are up here, it's a place that we can deal with them. So 
That's what I've got for you guys today, just a bit, just a little thing to think about. And I would love if you have follow-up questions, you can email them to me at Nicole at NicoleEunice.com. You can send them to me through DM. I'd be happy to see them there. You can, whatever, just send me a carrier pigeon. So um, I'm glad. I'm just checking to see if you guys, oh, you guys are still giving me good news. We'll close with some good news. So if you have good news, share your good news. And so today's challenge is really just that, to just become more mindful of your emotion. And when you see tomorrow, you'll see this feeling chart, if you want to use that and maybe share it with your children or your household to get yourself more intelligent around emotional language, because not only will that make you experience a more full and free life, but it can also help your family experience that. And in a time where we may need to help our household find the names for those emotions, the more you learn, the more you grow, the more you'll be able to impart. So I hope that's helpful to you guys. 